This is a vast open world you explore with your friends. Each Javelin exosuit has its own unique playstyle. The Ranger is balanced and all purpose, while the Colossus is a tanking powerhouse. All right, let's see what's up here. The world of Anthem is hostile, and threats can come from any direction. It's a dynamic world where the unexpected is around every corner. Uh, I'm not sure we want to use all our supplies on this guy. Yeah, he seems like a problem for another day. We're getting some fire from up ahead. I'll go low. You flank. later with Kim. <laughs> yeah, he could use the XP. Hello, treasure. I think we got some action ahead. Anyone? Anyone? We're under attack. Anyone in the area? We're under attack. I think that's part of Praxis's mission. You can equip your Javelin exosuit with gear that brings devastating power to combat. Oh, there are a lot of scars down there. Oh, the scars have a heavy. Not time to use that mortar. There's a bunch more coming in. Okay, I'll get this round. <laughs> oh, come on. Be selling good. Oh, yes! Jair's Wrath. Oh, nice. Large-scale world events like Shaper Storms are dynamic and pull you off the beaten path with the promise of new stories to discover. Oh, Shaper Storm incoming. Okay, actually, let's get some more people. Hold on a sec. Hey, guys, what's up? Hey, what's happening? I'm right behind you. Storm is getting crazy. So what are we supposed to do? Fly into him? All right, let's do this. See you on the other side. to call home. How will you 
build it. Work together to defend it from the terror. There is no, no sheet or things like that. You can really uh, appreciate the point of view wherever you are, it will be the same mechanics. So that was one of the big features uh, we wanted to make sure that we had before showing the game to the public, to everybody, so that we, we wanted to make sure that the technology was working and uh, this big ambitious game was uh, feasible. I'm going, I'm, go back, I'm going back to my spaceship. I want just to show you some gameplay ingredients. I'm going to change a little bit the time so that we have a bit more sun, yeah? So that spaceship is very, very nice. It, it's very close to the Beluga we had in Beyond Good and Evil 1. It can handle very large speed, but it's, it's also very easy to uh, do loopings and uh, trigger very fast movements. So it's a dogfighter. I can increase the speed. So this is a classic uh, plane speed we have on Earth. We are about 1,000 kilometers per hour. But you can increase that speed dramatically like this, for example, and you will see, so the speed is increasing now. You see that it's about 5,000 kilometers per hour. Let's go back in the city so that we can really understand the speed. And I can increase the speed again. Whoa. Use some tricks, movements, and then we are going to do a looping, for example. So you can combine anything any movements, and the very nice thing too is that you can even increase the speed to 20,000 kilometers per hour, which is a lot. I'm going to try, yeah, to drift like that. So at any time you can, you have the drifting mode, you have the, all these, these very interesting movements. Are we ready for a run? Knowing how to sail with the wind is a pirate's most precious skill the winds to increase your speed or to position yourself for tactical advantage in battle. To reap the most rewards, it is best to split up, some going inland, others keeping to the open sea. Each warship has unique strengths. The frigate's hull is reinforced, its arsenal equipped with numerous culverin cannons. The brigantine is devastating up close, with a battering ram designed to break any resistance. The sloop of war kills from afar, with its crippling long-ranged mortars and precise long nine cannons. Sail! Flying hostile colors! All sail! Ride the wind! All hands on deck! Position fixed! Open fire! Nothing will save you now! Brace for impact! Woo! Drown, you soggy nutmegs! Don't let bloodlust cloud your purpose. You're here for the loot, and so are your rivals. Store the goods, then back to your stations! The team that escapes with the most loot claims victory.
that stuff. We just try to make, keep it real, right? Right, right. Well, right. There, there was sort of a decision made at some point. What we we've been working. I've been wor- I've been on the project for what two or three years now. Yeah, I think three years. And uh, and so early on, I think there was a more. What were we? It, uh, it was more Kurt Russell <laughs> and sort of a two-fisted thing, and and then it, it turned into hey, let's yeah. take this quite seriously. And what that required is a lot more taking this combat stuff um, and and showing the horror of the violence that happens and 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 it were this type of circumstance to take place. I mean, realism, weirdly enough, is the thing we keep going back to when it comes to the not just the stunts but also the performance style. I think. You know, it was very important that it doesn't seem like a bunch of actors, uh, you know, saying lines. It was yeah. all very incidental. And we, you know, we wanted the world to sort of reflect that as well. So yeah. you saw there that, you know, Deacon broke into that emergency vehicle What's and this? found some supplies. So this is what we're calling our survival vision. Survival so you saw vision. that earlier when he was looking at Manny's bike on the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just kind of a way of, of seeing tracks in the world and sort of imagining what might have happened. Mm-hmm. And here, I, I just wanted to point out that you're seeing in this part of the demo that there are freakers there. There weren't there before because yeah. it wasn't snowing. It was, you know, and it was getting lighter out. It wasn't getting darker like it is. And so, um, you know, it changes oh, yeah. up the way you can play through the level. And what is this? What is so, <laughs> we call this the meat wall. <laughs> the meat wall. Yeah, and it's not just there, you know, to you know make the guys who put them up to, to seem evil. They're there for a purpose because, again, freakers are living creatures. They eat. That's their primary, that's their primary thing. They want to eat. And so you hang these dead freakers up. Uh, and it, you know, and anybody, any freaker, rather than coming into their camp, like you see here, they would actually we'll stop. stop and snack. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then the same thing with this freaker that they've hung upside down. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a bear trap underneath it, and um, they use that because a freaker will come, be attracted to the meat, and then hit that hit that trap. Interesting. Another another thing you just saw, by the way, is that is that, that tin can the tin can trap that you yeah, stumbled, that's a, that's an alarm that the marauders will put up. And this is again some of the things that marauder camps just do. And you find these marauder camps throughout the world. You'll find traps like that and then if you're careful and you're paying attention you can avoid them because in the first demo Deacon didn't avoid it and he set off that alarm right now now this is the same tactic that he used last time throws the rock to get someone to lure lure them over and have them step in the very trap but this one plays out a little bit differently than last time one of the things that, that struck me and we've talked about this obviously as we've shot but there's there's an effort of the other uh, marauders to get this guy to shut up and he won't yeah, and so in the in the first demo, you, you Deacon's heading on down the trail, and you can hear that happening behind him. Right. And this time we're showing what happened. So, you know, he's watching everybody react to this poor guy trapped in the you know in that bear trap, and she just is like, shut up, shut up, shut up, and then just loses it and shoots the guy. Right. Right. And of course, in the meantime, Deacon you know is crafting a Molotov and just takes them all out. Right. Oh, before this, dude. ow, ow. Ah! So yeah, so again, it's like in the pre- in the previous demo. Dem- Deacon was- in Far Cry 5, you'll need to improvise and choose from a vast arsenal of weapons and find elements in the environment to take down the enemy. There we go. So we just took down the last cultist at Nick Rise using my favorite stealth weapon, a baseball bat. Sometimes you can hear Boomer growling when he feels a threat nearby. And Boomer is just part of Far Cry 5's living world we've built, where there's always something, or someone, around you whether you notice it or not. This means you'll always need to be prepared. stand this ground and defend you from predators as there are a lot of moments for the player to hunt or be hunted. And we've built a deep ecosystem that represents Montana's wilderness. So, you know, we've seen ducks, um, a sturgeon, deer, and this is just a small sample of all of the wild animals that you'll encounter in Hope County. So now we've jumped into Nick Rye's plane. It's been in his family for generations, and with it, we'll take to the sky to destroy some uh, cult silos that are hoarding explosives. The world that we've built is larger than any Far Cry before, and for the first time, you can explore the world in any direction that you choose right from the start. In this demo, we're in Holland Valley, and this is just one small part of Hope County. 
Montana is called Big Sky Country after all. Flying is a great way to travel, explore the county, and scout out new opportunities. And also blow things up. Look at that go! Nice work, partner. Go get the other one. Oh, looks like the cult has decided to intervene. That plane belongs to a Chosen. Now the Chosen are elite soldiers and it's their job to basically crush any threat to the project at Eden's Gate. So we've done enough to anger the cult. We're gonna engage in a little dogfight with them and show them what we think of them. That's right, even in the air, there's a lot of opportunities for the player to uh, you know, find or discover or get chased by... Get by discovered. Or get discovered, yeah, totally. Uh, hunt or be hunted, as we call it. I think right now we are the predator. Yep, we got them on the run. They're smoking. And we did it. Well done. out on the field, right? Yep. So yeah, since we're playing in adventure mode, if you notice in the top left corner there, there's, there's no timer. Usually when you nice. pick up a no quest in Monster Hunter, you got a time limit to do it in. Okay. This, it's free roam. Oh, this is one of the, yeah, one of the locals here. Locals, like one of the... And so, they're explaining that, yeah, you can get different information from the locals. Yeah, and they show are, up randomly yeah. all around. Once again, I mean, Monster Hunter World, everything has a mind of its own, especially the monsters, the people. So, I mean, sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not. Oh, okay, sometimes they're not there, huh? Whoa. Okay. I feel like it. I mean, even the guys there, they're surprised to find that guy, so. They seem to be. So, all right, let's, let's, so as you can see, our scout flies letting us know what's in the area. Okay, maybe here's some items you can interact with. Nice. I think oh. Tokuda-san, what's he up to? Is he going to go fishing? Oh, There's we're going fish fishing. There's the fishing rod. All right. Oh, this is cool. So you can see the fish in the water there. Nice. Oh, it's a little different because in Monster Hunter, it used to be you would just go to a fishing point. You fish. And right, right. It. It but here, I think it's just anywhere you see a fish, you can probably just throw that rod out on the ground if you want to. Obviously, not going to catch it anything. But Advanced Monster Hunter fishing. Oh, sand fishing. Well, they'll probably be sand fishing too. That should happen. Very cool. <laughs> oh, okay. And, and they're saying so different fish react differently to the lure. Okay. So, like, sometimes you can throw it out and you see some fish are just grabbing onto it, but maybe other fish that you want to catch, they see that lure and they're just like, oh, oh, no, I don't want that here. Oh, okay, all right. So they're yeah. not going to fall for that. So you got to find different ways to trick the fish. Huh. I wonder how you do that. I you know how you do that? Because I'm not good at fishing. I tried it when I was a kid and. and yeah. I don't got the patience for it. And it looks like... Okay. The, all right, it looks like they found some Rathian footprints. Rathian. All right, so yeah, one of the major things in Monster Hunter World is finding tracks of the monsters in the area. Okay. Of your target specifically. Track them there. It looks like that was an older footprint. So yeah, I think th as tracks get a little bit older, they don't give you as much information, obviously, because they've been there for a while. That makes sense. So you moved. got you got the footprints, and, you know, monsters also mark their territory. We saw those scratches there. Oh. 
Oh, cool. All right, opening oh, nice. up the map. So, yeah, since this is our first time, I, this area is called the Wild Spire Waste. Okay. So, uh, this is our first time in this area, so as you we adventure through it, that map starts filling in that information oh. for the area for us. Nice. Okay. Oh, okay, and now Tokusan's explaining that the map is lit up red in a certain area indicating okay. that there is a large monster somewhere in okay that cool cool and then the scout flies are are I think, reacting yeah now see, too, right? we picked up enough tracks uh -huh. now that the scout flies are letting us know okay the monster probably in this direction or more tracks are in this direction okay. so as we pick up more evidence of the monster the, these scout flies are helping us out okay here, cool. pick up the scent and we okay right there. In, uh, <laughs> right then here we go all right so yeah fans of the series can rejoice you know You've seen Rathlos, Rath, now we got Rathian. The pair is back. All right. <laughs> the king and queen of dragons. <laughs> I, Looks like Tokusan is hiding in the brush here. Okay, yeah, right. He already engaged combat, which I don't know if it's the smartest move, but. Well, that's I okay. Okay, nice, Rathian nice. Lost him, you notice how the mini map just turned purple there? Yeah, yeah, what's that mean? So that means that we are now hidden from the monster. Okay. The monster is, we are no longer in direct combat with him. Okay. So he's gonna, uh, yeah, yeah, he's gonna make a few distractions here, try and draw. Luring him with sound, Rathian. Like. Sound of the slinger. Right? Nice, nice. Oh, oh up the tree. Oh. Boom! <laughs> nice. Oh, baby, it's rodeo time. Oh, man, that voice just makes it even better. Oh, man. I love, this is why I love the insect lady, because you can ride monsters yeah, like this. He just he just ran up on those mushrooms on the tree and That's jumped on. Th because, as we've explained before in, in previous PR stuff, you can run, you can use the environment all kinds of Yeah, there's so many different oh, environments. And you know things you can use to assist you in your hunt of these monsters. That's right. And nice. We got a few system. cheap shots in. We're going nice. going down. As you can see, we've changed the rodeo system. Now you can move between different parts of the monster. We've yep. knocked him down. So yeah. Tokusan, go nuts, baby. Miss, you know, Tokusan's a huge fan of the dual blades. Now, it looks to me like depending on where he hits, the color of the numbers, the, the hit point numbers, right, are right, right, there, right. What's up so, with that? So like, so the the monsters, you know, they have. More points of their body that are more resistant to damage than their weak points. So like the head and the tail here on this Rathian. You notice the, the numbers turn orange when you're hitting a weaker point there. You're going to be doing more damage with your weapons. Okay. So it's a good idea to probably focus in on those to really put on the hurt. Okay. Um, I mean, those locations are going to change up between monsters, obviously. Right. Not everyone's going to have the same weak point. Right. Like, so, for instance, for Rathian here, her head and tail are softer, right? Right, right. Okay, so they're going to take more damage. And it sounds like for less effective areas, it's gray numbers are going to show. Yeah, yeah, they're going to be whiter or gray. Okay, cool. And, I mean, if, you know, you're a huge fan of the series and, you know, you're, you like the classics, you know, I don't want numbers, you can turn them off. Nice, nice. Personally, options. I need options are always a nice thing. I need as much information as I can get. Yeah. I'm not as good a player as you, so, well. That's okay. All right, so, okay, we got we got the, the word from Yozo-san here saying, Scolding Toka to there. Yeah. <laughs> we, don't, we don't need to be fighting. This is not the objective here. We're not showing this off. We want to show off more of the area and the game. Okay. But I think, you know, it's just in Toka's blood. He just, he's got to fight these monsters. So. Uh, he has been hunting monsters for a while, this guy. Okay, it looks like we found some wyverns in the area. Nice, okay. Saving bad guys from other bad guys. Not how I thought today would go. Hey, big guy. Men are safe. Your turn. Who runs the demons? <laughs> You're about to find out. Check the roof. He's here?
Happen. Yeah. I'm getting reports of a helicopter with a wrecking ball? It's complicated. Turns out Martin Lee is running the demons. The guy who runs the homeless shelter? Like I said, complicated. Sit tight, Yuri. I got this. Please, let me got this. That helicopter is destroying the city. I know. You need to bring it down. I know. Maybe you could superhero a little faster? <sighs> Working on it, Yuri. This is where your story begins. Your goal, to become the greatest champion of all motorsports. We're starting off with a nighttime street race challenge. Street racing is at the core of the crew DNA and one of the many disciplines of the crew too. But this time we're shifting from underground street racing to bring you a more accessible, festive, and competitive take on the genre. Speaking of which, this race is about to get a little spiced up. How would you like to take this party to the rooftops? Now that was just a small example of the way we've redesigned the US cities to offer you more freedom for spontaneous challenges. In The Crew 2, your whole environment has been shaped and tweaked so that you can enjoy the very best experience.